We here at the Career Growth Made Easy podcast are very thankful for all our listeners. I want to take a moment and recognize one particular listener, Marielle. She provided some awesome feedback. She really likes the motivation and energy of our show and finds many of the episodes very helpful. She went on to say she even used a few of the episodes and some of the website content to update her resume. I think that's absolutely awesome, Marielle, that you enjoy the show. Thank you for your feedback. It helps us understand we're on the right track. Even better yet, you are able to use some of our podcast episode content to update your resume and help you out in the workforce. Great job. Speaking of that, today's episode has been inspired by some of Marielle's feedback. We're going to talk about taking back your workday. Please join me. Welcome back to the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Craig Ansell. I started out in the intro thanking one of our loyal listeners, Marielle, for helping inspire some of today's show content and also for her great feedback. Speaking of listener feedback, I built this show for you, the listener. If you have any feedback, you have positive things to say, you have a few comments that maybe the show could be better, or hey, there's some particular content that you're dealing with or struggling with that you just can't find help out there, let me know what that is, please. If I have the experience, I'll be happy to share and give you some guidance and direction. If not, I can reach out to my network to see if someone else does. Please use any of our social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. And lastly, you can always reach me, Craig at CraigAncel.com for email. Okay, so on to today's show. What's the topic? It's episode 89, Taking Back Your Workday. Part of the episode was inspired by listener feedback, as I mentioned. The other part of the episode was inspired by a great movie that I had the opportunity to watch again recently, and it was called The Shawshank Redemption. It's a prison movie, and there are some pretty gutsy parts in it, so it's not for the light of heart. But the main point about the movie is that there's a particular scene where two of the prisoners are speaking, And one kind of has lost hope. And he says to the other lead character, get busy living or get busy dying. I've always liked that line because it doesn't tell you which direction the character is going to take. Are they going to kind of buck up and move on and put their head forward? Or have they given up and lost hope? Now, what does that have to do with career growth? made easy. We're not talking about physically dying. We're talking about dying inside. Maybe we've lost hope. Maybe we've lost our passion in our careers. Maybe we've hit too many failures and we're starting to lose track of our dreams. Or maybe we forgot that we had dreams. If we run into too many troubled spots or too many difficult situations, fear can creep in. Worse yet, what if you're just, you've become so comfortable with your job or with the tasks that you perform that you become complacent? Essentially, you become comfortable with what you're doing and you just get into a steady lull, a steady motion about yourself. Almost as if you blank out other parts of your job and other parts of the world and just focus on that robotic effort that continual effort to complete that task or activity. None of that sounds good. In fact, that's the opposite of what the Career Growth Made Easy podcast is about. I do think, though, that those feelings are natural, so it's okay if you have them. Nothing wrong with that. But I do think there can be a concern if we dwell on those negative or helpless feelings too often or too frequently. At the Career Growth Made Easy podcast, we have a mission statement, and it's unlocking career growth opportunities 
by removing the barriers to success. Those barriers to success can come up in any form or fashion. It could be failure. It could be fear. Complacency. I'm sure there's a number of other words we could use that might describe your specific particular situation. All I ask for today's show is that we go through this episode. We each think about where we are in our lives, personally and professionally, with our growth. Is there anything stopping each of us from accelerating and moving forward? Is there a particular training that you need? Do you need to talk to a coach, such as yours truly? Do you need to read a few books and get up on a topic? Maybe listen to some additional podcasts, whether they're episodes from our show or someone else's. Take the time to search maybe on the web or through your podcast shows and see what particular areas are you interested in? What particular areas of growth might help you? We could start off with being interested in something and that interest could potentially grow into a talent or skill. Why am I talking about all these things? Because taking back your workday is when you kind of jump outside your skin, jump outside yourself and look at yourself and say, wow, I've gotten into a rut. No matter what I did and no matter what I do, it just doesn't seem to help. I'm stuck. If you have those feelings, I've been there and I can understand. The big thing though is that you can help yourself get out of that rut. There is hope. You can become proactive. You can reignite your dreams, dust off your goals, and put them into the spotlight. You want to remember why you go to work each day, why you perform the tasks that you do. Now, I understand you may not be in your ideal job. That's okay. Your job might just be a placeholder, so to speak. However, I recommend with wherever you're working right now, you give it your all and give it your best. I know that's easy to say sitting behind a microphone, but we have to remember why we're working. We're trying to provide a service and a value to those that are paying us. In the end, we're trying to help the true end customer. Now, some of you may directly work with and provide product for or service for the end customer, or you may be part of a long daisy chain of employees that build products or create services and never see or get to talk to the end customer. But I encourage you, try to renew your sense of passion and your sense of focus for your job. Again, even if you're not in your ideal job, your dream job, try to renew that passion. Why? While you're working, you're being paid. And like prior episodes, if you'd like to have an opportunity to continue to be employed, maybe be someone that's considered for promotion or for a higher pay raise, or for that matter, a pay raise at all given today's economy, you want to put in your best effort. Be someone that is an above average performer versus average or unfortunately below average and someone that might need some correction or guidance or worse yet could be put on a performance improvement plan because your your performance is substandard. I've got some data for you. Did you know that the average person is thought to change jobs 12 times in their lifetime? That's based on public survey data that was generated in 2019. Now, depending where you are in the work spectrum, you might be just starting out and wondering, how could I possibly have 12 jobs in my lifetime? Or maybe you're already towards that 12 job mark and you're saying, am I near the end? Is this finally it? Of course, that's average data and surveys that are loaded up on the web. So I'm sure the number varies, but it's just food for thought. I know in my particular case that when I started working, I think by the time I was 18, I probably had three or four official jobs. 
I'm not just talking about working for the neighbors and raking leaves or cleaning up their yard, but actually, you know, jobs where you had tax forms and documents to fill out, right? In one particular case, I was in fast food, and I switched companies because I thought it was going to be better on the other side. The grass is always greener on the other side, right? Meaning you don't know how green it is until you get there, and then you really wonder, was it worth the move? I think I changed jobs in this particular case for a small hourly pay increase. Maybe it was 25 cents or something like that an hour at the time. Then towards the end of my high school, I found a much better professional job working in a carpet and rug store. Actually, it was a really high-end rug store where we had handmade rugs that came in from foreign countries, and I learned quite a bit about that. That's where my pay saw a significant increase. There were times I would actually interact directly with the customer, taking around the carpet showroom as well as the handmade rug area. I also worked in the warehouse, which were some pretty warm and hot conditions back in New Jersey, and sometimes had to single-handedly pack up and transport rugs to customer vehicles or to their homes and then lay them out. Now, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but as you start to go from a 3x5 rug to a 4x6, 6x9, 8x10, 10 foot by 12 foot, they start to get pretty darn big and pretty heavy. Depending on the type of rug and how it was made, the amount of wool or the amount of silk or fabric used and the pile, the height of the rug, can really add a lot of weight. In some cases, those larger rug sizes that I mentioned weighed hundreds of pounds. I found ways to pack them, maneuver them, and transport them for customers, and sometimes just to customer vehicles. But it wasn't an easy job, and you're definitely paid for your performance. So now that we've talked a little bit about some statistics on the web about job changes, there's also something out there that varies with regards to careers. When I was much earlier on in my career, I heard people would change their main career focus three or four times in a lifetime. And I said, hey, I'm going to school for electrical engineering. I'm never going to change. This is my passion. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to follow after my father that was in electronics. He actually was in the Air Force, and that's where a large amount of his training came from. I wanted to follow in his footsteps with regards to electronics. After I got my Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering, I found a job or two in the field, and for about a 12-year stint, that is what I did, electrical engineering and design. However, during that 12-year period, I changed from the exact job I was doing, which was electrical design, to supervision, and then eventually moved into management. I still worked in the electrical or electronics field, but I wasn't actually doing the electrical design work or electrical testing myself. So as I moved into supervision and then management, my career in a sense changed. From there then, I moved into another career, project management. In a prior episode, I talked about repurposing yourself and repurposing your resume. And that can be one of the ways that can help you if you feel stuck in your career or stuck in your workday. It doesn't have to be so drastic to take back your workday by leaving where you're at immediately. But just start to get a focus on what skill sets you have, what areas you shine on, what are your strengths, what areas do you have weaknesses in, or what areas in your workday provide challenges to you. Where do you feel frustrated? From there, you can start to recognize areas you might want to work on improving or changing. And if you're simply unhappy with your work, take a break. Think about it. What makes you happy? What are you truly interested in? Is a change in your career what you need right now? Or do you just need a change in positions within the same company or looking elsewhere? To take back your workday 
it all has to start with you and your focus. What makes you happy? What makes you tick? Think about your dreams, your aspirations, your goals. Now, you can have short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. For the purpose of today's podcast, short-term goals could be something that come up in the next couple weeks or months, mid-term, the next one to five years, and long-term, five or ten years down the road. The point is, those goals, those dreams should be different. They should be steps in your life, steps in your career as you start to grow. So, thinking about taking back your workday, what are the things that are blocking you or challenging you? Maybe you pause this episode, take some notes down in your phone, or scribble them down on a notepad if you have them. It's okay to let those feelings, those emotions out. After that, we move to the proactive step. What are some things that you can do to improve upon them and course correct? You want to minimize your pain, your suffering, your unhappiness, whatever the right word is, at your job. You want to minimize that and hopefully turn your job, your position into something you enjoy doing. If you try different techniques and different tactics, including maybe training offline or working or coaching with someone, getting a mentor, and it doesn't work for your particular position, maybe you find, as I said, a different role within your company. Maybe there's something you see someone else doing. It could be online. It could be uh, watching a show or a movie, and you're really interested. Start researching that particular position, that career field. Make a pathway forward for you. You want to be able to take back your workday, not only the hours you put in on the clock, but also your regular day, your personal time as well. Go from reactive to proactive. Start thinking forward. Start thinking more positively. And when you hit bumps in the road, that's all they are. They're just potholes. They can be filled in and smoothed out and you can get back on track. I hope today's episode helped you think about taking back your workday if you're in a difficult spot. Or, in the near future, if you have some struggles or challenges, think back to this episode. Realize there is hope out there. There is encouragement. There is enthusiasm. It's natural to get stuck and feel like you want to throw in the towel. But it's also natural to have dreams, hopes, aspirations. So please, take back your workday today. Get your life back on track if you're stuck. And start moving forward proactively. As I started this episode with appreciation from a particular listener with their feedback, I ask each of you, please go online today to LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram. It's at Craig Ansell. And if you want to leave feedback on the podcast, we're on nearly every player, go to Career Growth Made Easy. We'd love to see your feedback. If there's a particular topic that you'd like to hear discussed, We'll see if we can put a show together for you. We'd be happy to do it. And if you have a particular struggle you're dealing with on your career growth, personally or professionally, let us know. We might be able to put a show together on that as well. I really hope that you have a wonderful work week ahead. Thank you for hanging in till the end and completing episode 89 with us from Career Growth Made Easy, taking back your workday. See ya. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media, at Craig Ansell on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.